I learned this conversation from a store that does an awful lot of vehicles every month. They are very aggressive with their pricing. Um, they are a high volume, I mean, I mean, I'm talking two to three thousand cars a month. So it's a high volume outfit. You don't do that kind of volume these days without advertising really low prices. But the problem they were having was the customer was coming in on these low prices, but their traffic was massive, but it was, hey, Kim, okay, how much better can you do? And their salespeople couldn't negotiate because there was, there was just no money left to negotiate. So if you can't negotiate, you piss off the customer. Um, even, you know, they don't recognize it's the greatest price in the world, even though it brought them in, but they're used to negotiate, they're used to the car dealer saying, yeah, here, we'll give you, we'll give you another 100, 500, 5,000 off. So they decided that they needed to proact to the inevitable price objection. So they taught their salespeople to do what I'm about to show you. I didn't make this up. I learned it from someone way smarter than I am. It's about a two and a half to three minute conversation, meaning Kim's going to talk because I'm going to ask her questions. Um, and it's going to, the sole purpose of this conversation is to dampen her need to negotiate. If you get really good at it, you'll completely eliminate a certain segment of the population from negotiating with you at all. Now that segment might be as high as 25 or 30 percent, it might be as low as 10 or 15 percent. I'm really good at this and I'd love to tell you I can get everybody just to say, oh, I love your internet price. That doesn't happen. You'll get another percentage of people who will make an attempt to negotiate, but I'll, I'm going to show you probably on Thursday the easiest second close in the history of the car business. But you have to do what I'm about to do with Kim, and you have to do it early. Do we have a lot of gross profit to play with these days? No. Do we deserve to make money on the vehicles that we help people buy? Yes. Yeah, we do. And the biggest problem with making gross is not the customer's willingness to pay it, it's their complete ignorance as to what the profit margins are these days. Okay, everything I teach, I use. And I will be the first one to tell you that everything I teach does not work every single time by any stretch of the imagination. I also know that it works more often the better you get at it. All of you are at a certain point right now with certain parts of this program where you can make a halfway decent presentation. I'm going to give you a three or four on a scale of one to ten, which is three or four hundred percent better than you were this past Friday when you didn't know anything about the program. But in order for you to get to seven, eight, nine, ten, which all of you have got the capabilities of doing that, what's it going to require? It's going to require Frank leading a 15 or 20 minute training session. I'd love to say it was six days a week. If you did it three days a week, you'd be awesome. It's going to take Kim. It's going to take Dave. It's going to take finance managers. Leading short burst training sessions. Because the better you get at this stuff, the more little things are, that are going to go right for you. And in order to make big money in this business, it's the little things that you, that you know to do and you discipline yourself to do. Okay, so Kim and I have been together for a while. Again, it could be five minutes, could be 15 or 20, but we haven't gotten deep into the engagement. I want to have this conversation with her right now. I always started off exactly the same way. Kim, before we go out and check out the vehicle that you came in to see, um, when was the last time you bought a car or a truck? About three years ago. Three years ago. When you bought that car or truck, uh, did you have to fight with the car dealer in order to get yourself a fair price or a good discount? Absolutely. Kim, how much fun was that? Sucked. You know, Kim, uh, you and 300 million Americans agree that it was the suckiest part of the automotive or truck purchase process. 
People have been complaining about it for a hundred years. Did you ever wonder why the dealer just didn't tell you what, give you a number and say, this is what you can buy the car for? Absolutely. Well, you know what? We salespeople hated it too. You're going to be glad to know that in the last three years, lots of things have changed and all the changes are good for consumers. That means you. And Kim, I'd love to tell you that all these changes have taken place because we wised up or we decided to do the right thing, but that wouldn't be true. All the changes have taken place for the reason most change takes place in our society. It's been forced upon us. Okay, the massive movement to online shopping has literally changed the way automobile dealers price vehicles. And I'm just not talking about all American. I'm talking about any dealer that plans on staying in business. I'm going to guess that you certainly didn't just shop all American, did you? Absolutely. No, if if you're like most of our customers, you went to the uh, consolidators. You went to Car Gurus, Cars.com, Auto Trader. You 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 probably decided what you wanted, and then you hit that little drop down tab that said price them or rank them from lowest price to highest price. Yep. I wonder if anybody will ever do highest price to lowest price. I haven't found anyone yet. But anyway, if we hadn't been right up there at the top, we wouldn't be having this conversation, would we? No. You know, Kim, here's the wild thing about it. We don't even price our vehicles anymore. Um, Kim, you've heard the buzzword transparency. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to give you a transparent look into how a car dealer, any car dealer, does business these days. Number one, they use a third-party software program. There's four or five of them out there that literally canvases the market 24 hours a day. Um, seven days a week matching every vehicle we've got in inventory up with every other like vehicle whether it's new or used within a 500 mile radius and the way we set it up is we're a volume store so we are going to be at or below market every single time which is why you saw us up at the top of the list and why we're having the conversation what you had to fight for the head butting gut wrenching time wasting back and forth negotiation with the Wizard of Oz behind the screen the last time you bought a vehicle you got that victory before you ever got off your couch or left your office because if we didn't give you that victory Kim we wouldn't be having this conversation if we do not pre discount our vehicles dramatically our phones don't ring the email inboxes don't fill up and no one shows up so you are a winner before you ever set foot on our lot because if you weren't, you wouldn't have set foot on our lot. Now, what this means to you is this is going to be the single most pleasant purchase experience of your entire life. It is also going to be the fastest purchase experience of your entire life. It really allows you to focus on what's most important. That's making sure the vehicle that you came to see is the right vehicle because there's no such thing as a good deal on the wrong car or truck, is there? No. No. And um, I'll tell you, this too. I've been doing this for about 38 years. For the first 35, I sold cars. For the last three, I've been helping people buy cars. And I'm going to tell you, the change is refreshing. It's a whole lot more fun for me. It's a whole lot more fun for my customers. So why don't we go see if the vehicle you came to see is in fact the right one. Cool? Cool. Cool. And we transition right back to the sales process. What was my point? Um, I, I don't, I'm not really justifying the price yet because that's going to, justifying the price comes with showing off the vehicle, taking a good demonstration ride, but I'm proacting to the price objection. Yes, sir? You're diffusing our expectations of having to negotiate. Um, I could not put You're it better. You're justifying the reasons why she's in front of you. Um, well, I'm doing that, but, but primarily I'm trying to diffuse the inherent need that the customer has to negotiate because that's the way we've taught them to do it. We've taught them that the best price is never the first one we give the customer. The customers have learned that it's profitable to say no. I say no to Kim, Kim goes, well, I'll be right back, and off she goes to get me some money. She shit that word. That's what salespeople do all over the country. That's, that's how I was brought up in the business. People would say no, I'd say I'll be right back. Okay? I was never taught any justifications. I was taught to say, well, how close can we come? How about we split the difference? Really intelligent things like that. Which, by the way, had a place in our business when we had a lot of gross profit to work with. But now splitting the difference means it's yet another mini deal. Or maybe it's less than a mini deal. But Irina said something I want to I hitchhike on. Um, Irina said, Let's help someone buy a car, let's don't sell them a car. 
Do people in New Jersey sit around the kitchen table on a Saturday morning and say, hey, let's go get sold a car? What do they say? Let's go buy a car. Let's go buy a car. Do people like being sold? Um, some people do. If, 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 if you line up 100 civilians and give them a multiple choice test, um, A, I love being sold, B, I love buying. What are they? most of them going to say? I love buying. So would it, you know, in fact, one of the things I'm trying to remove from my vocabulary, and after having done this for a really long time, it's not an easy thing. I, I, I focus on it all the time, and I still make mistakes. I'm trying to remove sell from my vocabulary and replace it with help people buy. Is Jim Hunt in here? Now, you're, you don't work for this organization, do you? No, I work for Primus. Okay, why didn't you say something to me yesterday about that? Welcome, welcome to the South. Thank okay, because I remember somebody, somebody told me on uh, Thursday that you were going to come down here, and when I was going through the uh, things last night, I went, well, we got somebody from Paramus here. Okay, welcome. You're brand new to the organization, right? Uh, four months. Four months, okay. Where were you last week? Uh, I switched to... Okay, well, glad you could make it this week. All right, um, any 